Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are in season four of Emerge Detour Essentials Live. So many of you have been on from so early because we know you're super excited for our guests tonight and we're so happy to be here and so happy for you to join us. We want to say thank you to our partner. We are powered by Sajikor and we are so grateful to have them on board with us tonight. I am Kathy Goodall. I am a connector of brands, businesses, and people, and I'm a part of the Emerge Trio. Welcome. Hi, guys. Um, my name is Naomi Garrick, also known as a PR chick, and I'm a personal branding coach and the founder of Garrick Communications, a boutique PR agency based right here in Kingston, Jamaica. Rochelle, what happened? Were you expecting Hi, more? <laughs> no. I was just looking at how many people are on. It's very exciting. <laughs> I know why. <laughs> My name is Rachel Cameron. I'm the CEO of our consulting firm, Pressure and Consulting Services Limited. I'm part of it. We need a new intro. Like not the Emerge Trio? Like what? Week. I'm coming with a new one next week. Okay. Yeah. I, like <laughs> I think so. <laughs> um, yeah. Over to you, Kathy. You're muted. <laughs> that usually only happens on Zoom calls, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome. Let us know. You can find us here every single Wednesday at 8 o'clock. Let us know, everybody, where you're joining us from. I see some people from New York, Connecticut, um, Toronto. We are so excited that you're here with us tonight. Um, you can like us and follow us on all of our platforms at Ready to Emerge um, so that you can see who our guests are that are coming next week. We have an excellent lineup for the rest of this season. And I can't believe we're in our fourth episode already. Oh, season four. Yes. So that's anyway. that you can watch all the past episodes from season one to where we are today, season four. That's right. So we need to pause for a moment because everybody that's online right now needs to stop you need to go to your calendars and just block out July 26th. What's happening on July 26th now? What's Rashi? happening on July 26th, Kat? Why don't you share that exciting news with us? We are going to be emerging in an online world. So our first workshop, is this our first for 2021? I think no. It's, no. it's our second, our, our second, second workshop for yeah. 2021. I can't yeah, believe we're in June we're already. At the start of the year, but it's just frightening that we're in June. June. So, yeah. <laughs> yep. So on the 26th of June, we are going to be having our, our second Emerge workshop. We are going to be emerging in an online world. Now, everybody knows that we've gone digital, right? Everybody knows that regardless of where you work, Whatever you're doing, you're connected to technology. And so how are we going to use this technology now to enhance our lives, to enhance our businesses? And how are we going to, to capitalize and maximize on a in a digital world? So that's what we're going to be covering in our workshop. So for more information, you can go to any of our platforms at Ready to Emerge and follow us. Send us an email at readytoemergenow at gmail.com. But we will be sure to send out more information to everybody that's on our mailing list. So if you're not a part of our mailing list, just send us a message and we'll add you. Yeah. Awesome. That's going to be exciting because, I mean, mm -hmm. we, we started off in a digital world last year and we're still here. And obviously, we're going to be here so <laughs> forever. Forever. <laughs> So, Rushi, over to you. Is it is it star time now? Is it star time already? It's, I believe it's well, star time. I'm looking at the commentary. I see people were on. Desreen High was on at 7.35. Desreen, I forget her prize. Desreen come first. So, um, <laughs> I'm 27 at 7.46. I see um, star, star people, child. I hope I said that right. Altia. And it's like the whole America, they're online tonight, you know, because I see New York City, I see Bronx, I see Connecticut. Lorian, I see you here from Toronto, the Boss Mom Network. She's global, so she's from everywhere. Yeah. Um, and then we see somebody joining from Serbia. Serbia, the place named Serbia, big up yourself. 
CM joining us from Serbia. And when I see we have Queens, New York, we have Georgia, we have people logging in from 735, we know the kind of guest that we have tonight. So if you were keeping it to yourself, just quickly send a message to let people know it's star time. It's that time of the night. It's buzz time. So jump up out of your seat and just start walk around like you're mad. Because the lady has given this quote, this difficult patch of road on your journey is all a part of the fire experience that is needed to form your brand. Stay, hashtag, cute, and go true. This could only be a quote from the inimitable, indefatigable Norma Williams. Norma Willie, that is the lady for tonight. Stop what you're doing right now and tell your all your friend them to join. So with a discerning eye and a penchant for fashion, Norma has been unapologetic about her bold style since she was old enough to dress herself. She is that lady that at the beach party is in a full on gown. She's my kind of girl. <laughs> hey. Her ability to redefine norms as only Norma can redefine norms and to predict and assimilate trends has solidified her role as one of the region's most talented style visionaries. She spends her time training the most gracious attendants to fly the Caribbean skies, while also providing style consultations to a growing private client list. And it is growing because apparently, if you're not styled by, by Norwilly or branded, nothing, nah, guan, <laughs> More than 20 years of trainer, Norma's ability to impart knowledge and inspire change is unparalleled. She has created training programs for several hundred flight attendants and pilots who found themselves as the face of the former national airline, Air Jamaica, and currently that based Caribbean Airlines. Here in Jamaica, Norma is responsible for the intense new and recurring training programs that flight crew undergo, specializing in human performance and crew, crew resource management issues. So, you know, she's going to give away the voice tonight, the voice of Air Jamaica Fasten Your Seatbelts. She's a co-creator of LEAP, Leadership Empowerment and Action Program, a system-wide empowerment training facility focusing on personal branding, communication, coaching, and styling. As the principal of Branded, Norma adds even greater detail to the personal branding experience for both corporate and private clients with specialized rebranding programs that include personality analysis and solution-based approaches. Ladies and gentlemen, fasten up your seatbelt, them. Make sure you have your food, your popcorn, and start running around like a man because it's handing out the air time. We are now going to be joined by Nora Willie herself. Norma Williams. Wow. That's so nice. <laughs> Hi, ladies. Hi, Hi Norma. Norma. Hi, How Norma. How oh, are boy, you? We're all very excited about tonight. <laughs> Me too. I'm so honored. <laughs> oh my god, I'm honored, really, really honored. And look how she's fabulous. Uh, hello. I had we no choice. Nothing that. less. <laughs> I mean, I'm getting ready to be emerged. Come on. I'm, I mean, what, what? <laughs> I love it. So, Norma, we are beyond excited to have you on the show Thanks. tonight. Um, especially so that we can receive our branded education. <laughs> Thank and you. Before, before I even get into the journey, right? We want to hear all about the journey. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, you would have, if you were in Jamaica, and not necessarily just in Jamaica, you would have seen the internet blow up a couple of weeks ago when Tammy Chin Mitchell and Wayne Mitchell Marshall were styled by Nor Willie. Yep. They looked like they were stepping in and out of the Oscars. Yep. Right? yep. On, on every single social media platform, it was like a total transformation. So just in case y'all didn't know, this is the lady responsible for that. 
Thank you. Thank you. And as you know, Naomi, it was so not their, their vibe. And I was like, please just take this journey with me, please. And they came and they're so happy that they did. And not only did they take the journey, you were able to do all of that within less than 36 hours. <laughs> Yep. So well, and Debbie as well. Good. Debbie be soon. The, the three of them in two days. Yes, and Debbie. Amazing. Right, right. Amazing. I wish we had the pictures to show on screen, but you guys can Google it. You can find it. <laughs> so, Thank Norma, you. we want to start off with you telling us about your journey mm -hmm. from fire on the world to becoming branded. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, over to you. Well, um, you know, when when you guys reached out to me, I thought it was so important. Of course, you know, I love the pretty things and so on. But I really thought it was so important because of what we're going through now with the pandemic. And I had the opportunity to be seeing a lot of persons and having conversations with a lot of persons who were having a lot of difficulty just dealing and handling what they were going through here with COVID and the lockdown and the illnesses and and just just the entire vibe of what was going on and i thought um you know it was best for me maybe to share you know a journey that sometimes people think the journey is not even a real journey because you know of my view on how i've gone through it um and uh, you know i'll just share a few things that i've gone through um in in when i was at when I, when I was a youngster my friend now who has passed she died from a heart attack um she was at my big sister and she was responsible to to walk me home and we were coming home and you know, the next thing we knew, it was like a barrage of gunshots and we were, you know, on the ground hiding from gunshots and so on. But thank God again. And, and, and one thing I want to bring out tonight is the importance of angels. If God will put you through these difficult things, but he'll always give you an angel. And then we there we were and somebody said, oh, my God, isn't that so-and-so's niece who is my friend? And as a result of that, they kind of guided us through. And that was number one. We were saved. Um, my next, my next journey, my next situation that I wanted to share was um, when um, my daughter at the time was maybe she was a toddler, and I'd gone to the hairdresser to have my hair processed, which I hated doing um, because it was so painful and the burning and all of that. And there I was in the hairdresser, they relaxed in my hair, and the next thing I know, it was projectile vomit all over the people's fancy. It was blondels at the time, and um, there I am in the place. My neck got stiff, and by the time they took me to the hospital, of course, I didn't. The diagnosis wasn't so good. They had to call Doctor Banbury, who diagnosed that I had a brain bleed in the hospital in the hairdresser. Um, I went to the to the. I was transferred now to the Tony Twaits wing, where I was handed over to Doctor Crandon, and they he because I didn't know exactly what to do because I had what was called an arterial venous malformation at the base of my brain with aneurysms within the malformation of the throat. And so what they had to do until they found a solution, because it was so close to my brainstem, I just was in a room. I couldn't speak. I couldn't talk to anybody. I couldn't see anybody. No pillows, nothing else, just to lie prone. Of course, that my thank God for my friend Harriet at the time, who was an intern, she'd come and chat with me and so on. But through the whole thing, there was such a defiance, you know what I mean? I felt like, all right, fine, I'm doing this, but we need to find a solution for this. I have things to do, <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's okay. just get over this. <laughs> so I was there, Michelle Gordon at the time, Michelle, Michelle Jackson, um, you know, she, we, I decided I wanted to, have a conversation with Dr. Crandon, wrote them down as my sisters. And the very first day that I got to get them to come and visit as my sisters and hang out with me, I had another bleed in the hospital. So of course, that was it of that. And to be honest with you, the, the only time somebody came there with the body was uh, somebody I used to work with long ago. And she came with one bag of all in and Mr. Guy Girl, no, we don't do that today. We ain't balling that. Move out. <laughs> and so the the real, the real, the real vibe for me was let us get through this. Let us yeah. just continue. Make we just move on through this thing. This is a bump in the road, 
but we're going to get through this. Yes. And absolutely. so I did. I moved through. We went away. We went away. Thank God, Karen Michelle came with me. And we, we did the surgery. And I was okay afterwards. I came back home. And, and it worked. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that was time two. <laughs> Um, time three now, major time. I mean, going through that, you know, after that, um, I'm sure there are a few cabin attendants on here and they will tell you that almost all the emergencies that we have had in North history have been there on the airplane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but outside of that, got what you know, you know how I view it, and I tell all the face the ones this is. When they're going to say to me that you know, I'm on the airplane for all these things, I tell them that God is preparing me to be the best instructor that you'll ever need. That's because right. I know people can't tell you about them. <laughs> I've lived them. You've lived them. Right. So that was that. And then um, in 2005, as an instructor, I was asked to go to Piccadilly. I was invited by the, the London police because we had a proper human trafficking. So I was invited to go to, to, to this conference to learn about the concept of human trafficking because there were a lot of cases in Jamaica, uh -huh. coming out of Jamaica. And so I went up and um, coming, going to Piccadilly from the hotel, which I had to go to the airport. I jumped on the train and so on. There, I'm going to show you God again because I sat in the forward car. Had a little issue with, with trains because I had some issues before where I got stuck in the train. That and I came mm -hmm. out, got a new sleeper, came back in, but I didn't go to the front car, went to the second one. And when I got into the second car, I sat down. And as soon as the car, you know, we go on the beautiful road in hillside, it was nice. And then when, as soon as we went on the ground, there was the explosion. The train was bombed. And so people died in the car. I got a massive cut on my face. Well, not a massive cut on my eye, actually. And uh, we had to be evacuated after 20 minutes, so I would think. Um, it felt like about five hours. Um, and then when I came out, I was about to go into the bus now to try and find my way. They told us the buses were just bombed, so we I had to come out of that. No, I'm sorry, I just <laughs> I'm just trying to process. I'm just trying to process what you're actually really saying here because you're just saying it so calm, like you know it was just a regular day, and then you know they bombed the train, and then yeah, yeah but two. Like, yeah, but this is what I need people to understand, and that's why, as I said, beautiful clothes. I'm talking to you about what Brandy does, and how I I can make you beautiful. Yeah, I'm gonna take you into this avant-garde beautiful world. That's great, but what is more important is for us to understand the importance of walking through the fire experiences, because. You know, I, I just saw a quote from Miss Kitty. The truth is, there is nothing beautiful that is made without some element of pressure. Nothing. Yes. I'm not cute. I'm come here to emerge today. I'm never cute up brushy. Yes. I'm never cute up to come today. There is no thing that you can look at that is not in a particular state of beauty that yes. did not experience pressure to get there. Yes. I believe it with everything that I've gone through. I believe it with all of what I am. That God chooses exactly who he chooses the strongest soldiers to face the toughest battles. And that's what I feel. Well, you are the general in the army. <laughs> because. So then, story time. So that was that in 2005. I had the second myomectomy abdominal womb surgery in 2007 i think it was 2007 right and then i started to have some but here watch angel again watch angel because every time these things would happen to me medically karen was always there karen. or able to guide me don't it big up dr karen <laughs> and so 
in 2007, I started to have some really bad abdominal pains. And with the pains, went, did the tests, whatever. So I basically lived at 23. So everybody there knew me. They just kind of had room 19 as my room. Because wow. I, had, I had this bad thing with my pancreas, I had pancreatitis. And so I would just pack my car, go inside, and then the, the treatment is nothing by mouth. But me now lose no weight. So let me just rule that out. But I would... I would not be allowed to eat. And then eventually I had the worst of it in 2008, the worst episode. And my doctor decided, you know, decided he would try to find somebody in the States who could help, you know, because I had a mass on the pancreas and they would just pull the fluid to ease the pain. So anyway, when I went to, uh, he, I went to Wino, Karen again, Karen is here with me. And I went to the hospital. Karen is watching. Yeah, man. Angel, Angel. I'm going to tell you one other Angel story about she again. And then when I got to the hospital there, um, I did the tests and so on. And the worst part of it is that they gave me a diagnosis of adenocarcinoma, which is pancreatic cancer. That was the diagnosis. And I had to do immediate surgery to remove the, the which I did. I removed the tail of the pancreas. I removed the spleen, the gallbladder through a, an abdom abdominal cup. Anyway, so I did that. I was there. Michelle came up again. Um, and then I, came, I went back home eventually and stuff after that surgery. But the great thing is after the pathology, what they found was that I had this rare form of a neocystic neoplasm or something. I don't remember the name of it. But anyway, it is a low-grade um, thing. So I now have to be monitored every year. I have to do another scan to see if I have any more of these tumors growing. But again, McDonald, I'm all right, don't eat. <laughs> normal and normal and not okay. Yeah, no, 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 no. I just want to and I can feel the tears like just. No, just, no, but I want to have a lot of We're not bringing that here. Let me just call it to the right, name. Yeah, with that. Right? <laughs> We yeah, took cute. Hair, but we took cute. No, no, no. We took cute. And that's not the purpose of this. The purpose of this is to explain to people that you will get these experiences. And don't believe that sometimes you're not. We get knocked down, you know. Because I will not tell you that I there are many times where when they're not the down, but they're not, I'm not gonna stay up there. Yes. You know. That's the thing. There are times when, you know, especially for that particular the, the, the situation, that surgery, that one was a tough one because I was there um, in a hospital basically by myself after I did the surgery because everybody had to go back to work right. and everything. So that was difficult. But I'm not going to tell you that I'm going to stay all the way down there. Mm -hmm. And then now I'm going to tell you what God I did. And then I developed what is called um, really, really bad allergies. So anaphylaxis, where your throat gets cut off. And so I'm having these episodes of anaphylaxis that nobody knows why and what I'm allergic to, idiopathic situations. And I had a bout of this anaphylaxis. And I went to the hospital because I, I drove myself to the hospital. And I'm there, and they're giving me the medication to solve whatever the problem is. I had yeah. called Karen. When I called her, she was at a, an event in her ball gown, a ball gown event, right? So I went, I didn't get her. So I hung up the phone and I drove to the hospital because I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't breathe after a while. So I got there, and the breathing, I'm, I'm having difficulty breathing. And the doctor is there trying whatever she's trying. And she's like, this is not working. We're losing her. And I swear you, like Karen, if you're on the little thing now, make her put it in you. Just as the doctor said that, the curtain parted and Karen came into Andrews in her ball frock. Wow. Is it a movie? Eh? Movie. I said, it's it's a serious, movie. Thing. serious thing. I didn't speak to her. I didn't speak to her. I called her, she did, and I didn't get her, and she apparently was calling me back and not getting me. And what she did was to leave the event at the Pegasus and drive to Andrews in her ball frock and came, parted the curtains in Andrews and told them to go move, pull up her, pull up the, 
the um adrenaline or adrenaline there we go you see the connection hold it up gave me the injection boom just like that you see god wow you wow wow wow, wow. Okay. so what i'm trying to say and the purpose of all of this is not no pity party not onto that what i'm here for is that god never gives you these things without giving you the supporting mechanism to carry you through to continue your process of building who you are then that's a fact that is a fact well you are a living testament to that normal mm, go ahead i said you're a living testament to all of that yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, a lot of the times I wouldn't share and I wouldn't talk and so on. And I, I felt to myself that really, I think I'm doing a disservice or an injustice to people all around if I'm not sharing things like that to let people know that, yeah, things get, it will get difficult and it will get to a point because it's interesting. I said to Karen recently, we were talking, I was saying, boy, look how many things I've gone through. And uh, once they had an, an emergency into Montego Bay. And when I came off that airplane after we were having, the airplane was having difficulty stopping. And when, when I came off the airplane, that's the one that gave me the most issues. That's the one that made me feel anxious and, and so on and so on. And I'm saying, can you believe that? After all of the other things. <laughs> yes. Know? So I do get those moments. But I don't, I feel like I just I don't want to go. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Dress up and feel nice and drink some drinks and enjoy yourself, man. Like, we have to live. We can't exist through this. You know? We have to live yes. and go through all of this. Yeah, and sometimes what? people will see you and they see they see Norma Williams now and they don't know that you have been through stuff. So they think, Norma don't know nothing. Norma don't go through nothing. Norma just get up and float out of bed looking fabulous. And it's so important that we share that. People hear themselves in what you're saying. And they realize, but we can't go back to this. He's a warrior. He's a warrior. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So, yeah, man. We have warrior blood inside of us. We're born to fight. We are born to fight. And instead of fight and trace and come and see the man block road and burn tire, fight through mm -hmm. whatever it is that you're going through. Fight yeah. through your own personal battle. Because we all have personal battles. We do. We all have personal battles, you know. And my battle may be a massive one that, 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 that possibly came to take my life. Your battle might be a little one. Your battle but might be just you know, yeah. something in your house. Yeah. 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 But you need that battle. Whatever it is, just understand that the battle is a part of the process. Yeah. It is that curve in the road that you just have to have. You just must have it. Everything beautiful. Fine. Has to fine. Everything. Of course. Of course. And, and There's the in the fire, it gets cooled down so that it can be the fabulous resplendent Norma Williams you are. But, but watch this now. Look how many of us here talk about the concept of branding. What, where did the concept of branding come from? The, the concept of branding came from that heated metal put on you to brand you. It is about fire. Every single thing that you think about, it's about a fire experience. It's either pressure coming down on you to make a diamond or some, some, some kind of precious stone is going to come out of it. It must come out of it. So as we're going through all of what we're going through, I feel like what is important for us is to stop, first of all, be just be grateful. Be grateful for the angels that come around you. I'm so grateful for Karen. I'm so grateful for Michelle. Because one thing, you know, the, the 28 experience back there when we were when we were um, persons at Air Jamaica, I'll never forget it. The only time I felt tears come to my eyes. And it's a little bit of, um, to be honest with you, it's a little bit of um, vanity and vexation of spirit. But, but as a person, walking through the airport is fabulous. When you are now going away on an airplane, cannot, I couldn't walk, right? Because I had left side paralysis. So I had to be going in a chair to be lifted up to the air to the airplane and all the crowd of people thank god them times people weren't doing videos in 1997 but at least i mean they were running this time to come and take a peep 
and go back and Lord, oh God, poor thing. And if you want to kill me, <laughs> make me hear poor thing. That is what will kill me. So, you know, I find that we have to first be grateful for the, the support that we get in, in whatever form. You know, I have to, I can't even stop by, by not mentioning it. And it comes in all forms because my Catherine's daddy, my daughter's father, you know, if it wasn't for him, me gone. Because in that experience, I'm grateful for him for this. He's a bad work merchant, right? He works, he's a marine pilot. He works on the wall. He believes bad work. He trades them. <laughs> so when the poor little doctor guy said, oh, she's having migraine headaches, take her home and give her this medication. Old Martha, reload. You chip them so. <laughs> no, no migraine can paralyze nobody. You what's it? Clock, clock. <laughs> <laughs> and as a result of the fracas, let me put it that way, the nurse said to me, Who's your doctor? And I said, Dr. Banbury. And she says, Okay, let me call him because she's calling him to stop the fracas out there with the bad word in the chat and the poor little doctor. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank God for that. I have to be grateful for that because if he was a little mousy, decent guy, I would have just pack up my little things and go home and die. Yeah. So there's so many things that we have to be grateful for. You know? Absolutely. So first of all, be grateful. You see Carlene's comment? They want to see the gown, Norma. They want to see the gown. Oh, it's not a gown. Actually, today I'm doing pants. I'm doing pants, dude. How do we do this now? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm getting it. It's a tuxedo. We can see a sleeve. Yeah, I have five months today. Look here. This name ready to emerge, you know. It's not Stop a young man. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know what, Norma? Well, first of all, thank you for sharing your journey with us. You know, that's something that's very important on this platform. You know, we, we, we really believe that the journey is truly the reward. And every single thing that happens in our lives, you know, the good things and the bad things and the different experiences, yes. of who we are today in this moment. And it's very important for people, as Rochelle said, they get up and see you and think you just, and you probably do wake up like this. And that's why you don't know what went behind all of that, right? Um, you, we, we, we've been hearing you speak about Air Jamaica a lot, right? And we know that we have past Air Jamaica flight attendants, purses, um, mm -hmm. hair. Um, my husband was part of the, of the original Air Jamaica in the 80s where they used mm -hmm. to have fashion shows on the, on the London leg. Because, of course, there's no, that was the in-flight entertainment, right? It was, it was. Actually, I want. I thought I wanted to be a flight attendant when I was a child because, you know, my mother and, you know, Air Jamaica was really until I had a flight when I was about 12 or 13 and as the plane took off, I, I threw up and that was it for me. No more dreams of becoming a flight attendant after that. So <laughs> I admire you ladies. It ain't easy with that turbulence on that flight. And, and you uh, get used to it. <laughs> oh, how, how, how is that possible? You do, you get used to it. There, we, do, we did have a lot of persons who um, after initial training, um first two three flights they they um you see your brain is an interesting thing you know um when you get into work mode when you get into that mode where you have to start working your brain forget about all of that you don't even remember that you're in a tube so you're really about the job and it's and, and a lot of people would be would like to think that being a flight attendant is about coffee tea or me and it's I mean, like we do eight weeks of training and maybe one week is service. There's so much for them to learn about the aircraft, about Safety. the system of the airplane, first aid, about, you know, uh, how to work together as a crew, a crew how, to, how to deal with, you know, oxygen and pressurization issues. There's so you're, much. You're, you're ultimately responsible for lives. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Right. So speaking yeah. of that, can you share with us maybe two of your most memorable experiences? With Ooh, Air Jamaica. I, with Air Jamaica? Yes. 
Okay, so with Air Jamaica, I would say, oh, I'm, I'm going to give you another another cute and true moment. Um, we this is when Boot Stewart just came about. I will give you I will give you one that has to do with the concept of excellence and how a bad situation can push you to excellence. When when Eric, when Boot Stewart just came about, he hired the batch of the our batch, right? Which was and another batch before, which was about um younger flight attendants well the older flight attendants were not happy about it they had a, a, a industrial action and it's a lot of drama and as a result of it there was a lot of animosity towards us when we came online and for me i turned that animosity and i'm like look here there's something called a briefing where you literally do an exam an oral exam before every flight and the person is responsible for asking you the questions and so for me None of these people who are giving me attitude would get the opportunity to buff me up and tell me no to any of my questions. And as a result of that, that is how I started to literally consume the manual. I would study the manual page by page, word by word by word. And that is really how I got the opportunity to become an instructor as a result of my digesting the manual in that. Way. So that's one memorable experience. And two, memorable experience was um, we had a, an emergency situation where we hit a thunder storm cloud. And so the aircraft literally dropped. And so when the airplane drops, you go up. So I went up because I was at the time icing champagne because it was Boots Stewart and we had tons of champagne just bathing everybody in champagne. Love you, Boots Stewart. And so... <laughs> We were actually, I, I, I burst my knee open. But of course, coming off now, you know, they're, they're like, boy, you know, do you need a wheelchair? Wheelchair what? I'm doing that. <laughs> Too cute for that. <laughs> no. But you now, <laughs> as bad as, uh, as those, I mean, those sad situations, Air Jamaica was an amazing experience for me and amazing it helped to really form who i am in terms of excellence one and it opened all of our eyes to just an amazingness you know i just had just a world that just was beautiful and and things were just always perfect and you know and and the other thing about air jamaica is it taught me about brand and how important it is to get to the soul of the persons that you're doing business with. Wow. And that's what we did. We got to the soul of the Jamaican people. They loved us and we loved them yeah. right back. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. But what are you know, just for all time see, for all of us who you got to our soon and for the air Jamaica team. On. Can you please tell the most important aircraft? <laughs> I can. Let me see. Actually, I have the honor of writing the last set of manuals for Air Jamaica. So let me see if I can um let me see if I can go back into it to say, you know, in my purser voice. Welcome aboard, ladies and gentlemen. This is Air Jamaica flight BW115. Destined from Kingston, Jamaica to the John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York. Everybody has to learn the first of all. Listen. <laughs> First of all, we've all, all tried the Persa voice. <laughs> yes, we've all tried the Persa voice. <laughs> so that's where to Do you know that there were people in London who would make it a family trip to go to the airport to wait to see the airplane land? They're going no place. Yeah. And this is just like in Jamaica when people used to go to the waving gallery. They're in yeah, London. Used to see that's where we got that from the little piece of Jamaica that flies. Um, People felt like this was Jamaica flying. Yeah. yeah. Wow. wow. Okay. Girl, Norma, that was that was just that was brilliant. <laughs> 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 you know, Norma, one of the things is um, 
there is something about you that when, when you walk into a room, you know, when you enter a space, you take up space. Uh -huh. You will rub it up there. In fact, you give it like a pump of fresh air. Yeah, and yeah, but, but listen, listen, Rochelle. We all, every single one of us, and it is always a part of any training I do. It at at in my in my recurring training for my cabin attendants, in my initial training, I am it is critical for me to teach people to take up space. You know that when we were children growing up, we were um, always taught to small up yourself yeah. and to and you know and run a back and so no 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 we can't do that we have to straighten the back square the shoulder square the jawline enter the room assess the room see where you want to go and if you want to go right to the front at the front of the podium you go there and you you saw so, you make sure your your gait is elegant you make sure your walk is powerful you own the room you are noticed you go in you enter the room. Yeah. Where does this bold, confident woman come from? People are like, don't forget the drinks when Nama drink. So we can walk. Girl, let me tell you something. Let me tell you another part of the story. You know that when I was raised, I was raised, my mother had my, my two brothers early, and I was, I was, a little time after and so i was kind of raised to smaller myself and you know i don't know there was a, something inside of me that every time i had an older brother who um you know was favored so to speak and so every time she, you know something would happen and my mother used to you know smile and we were in the grandmother smile and we so take we used to just say trying don't like <laughs> yeah i'm taking common entrance two times <laughs> no <laughs> because for me i could not understand why the excitement no i'm not gonna smile at myself no i'm not gonna do that no, <laughs> no. <laughs> mm -hmm. Come on, and, and, you know right now too even in myself right now i i've, I've gotten to be quite a, a a thick girl, right? And so even if I go with my super fab, super skinny, fabulous body friend, then me not stand up. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, me, nice too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And you know, Norma, I think one of the things, so I remember we have both spoken at a Sajikor event. Yes. Um, so. in and I think one of the things that, um, that, that really stuck with me about you that weekend, you were a speaker and Michelle was a speaker. And I remember yes. you to test the sound for Michelle. To test the presentation. Yes. Like, is it Norma also speaking? And I yeah, adorned Michelle. And you know, when Michelle flew to everybody and the two of you know, and they talk at that and they dress and we say, Yeah, because you see, let me explain something to you. Let me explain to you. If if I'm in a crew, me no, there will be no pop donary in my crew. No pop donary yeah. in my crew. And so if if it is my friend going to do something, I'm going to go to the last to ensure. When Michelle and I are doing stuff like that, I have to plan the wardrobe. She be in her fight because she don't want to wear some of the things, but I, she has to wear. Them. I have to. I have to plan the wardrobe. I plan every single thing that we're supposed to wear. I want to hear what she's saying. I want to critique it. I want to make sure that it, you know, the sound is great. Uh, yeah, and the same thing. I mean, any friend I have, and as a matter of fact, my team members as well. My my team members at Caribbean. If it is my any of my team members are doing something, it's if it is outside of the company, which I encourage them from time to time to use up their hobbies and do whatever. I mean, Lila from Zylac will tell you if Ly if Zylac makes something, I'm gonna say no, Lila, uh, 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 and I'm gonna go with her and go through the whole thing until. We get exactly what we want because I believe in excellence, and yes. you ca I can't be the only one shining in the 
Gopar, Michelle is the only one shining in the group party. We, we're moving together as a force. Yes. That's how I, yeah. how I view it. And that's how you guys present this yeah. shine moving forward. Um, Michelle says, Norma is an amazing friend. And Norma, you can the support of your tribe when you meet them. Can you just, 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 just tell us a little bit more? Because, you know, sometimes some people are still struggling with this concept your tribe just yeah. how powerful having a tribe where you're not just a member where you're making from the tribe but you're pouring back you know, we all turn up when you guys speaking things you know you say many of us are sure if anybody did come here for you so oh, when you look and i bowed before i come and said only Norm williams <laughs> i love you <laughs> i love you too i'm such a fan you know that but let me say, let me talk about that. Let me talk about that. I'm a, I'm a painful loner. I mean, I live in a house by myself. I'm a loner. I love to come here and lock up by myself. I'm a loner. Let's it, so that's a fact, right? However, I believe that if anybody, and I'm, I'm also a, a, a loyalist, too fault. I'm a, a, and also very professional. So even if sometimes me and Michelle, they're not chatting on nobody now, no. Because me just vex with her because I keep malice. That's one of my weaknesses. You want to know my weaknesses? Let me just fess up and tell you. Me malice you if you don't believe yourself. <laughs> so, I, but, but I, you will never know. Because if Michelle is about something, I'm about it. If Karen is about something, I'm about it. Because I believe, I believe. Okay, there's, you know, I think it was Usher who had that song. That we're a something, something, but we're a force when we're together. If you have a group moving and you have a head this way and it's coming this way, moving this way, yeah, it's going to cut like a torpedo. That's, yeah, it will. But what happens if it's coming this way? If it's coming this way, like a block slamming for, forward, it's a force, you know. It is a force. And within my group, I can tell you that, it, and, and let me just put in my booby brand on in there because Brandon is also a part of, of the whole thing with us. And yes, all Bobby. of us have our strengths, Booby. We all have our strengths and we all support. You have to support. You have to support. And trust me, that, that level of selfishness, it doesn't serve anybody. Because trust me, you're never authentic. One. If you smile up, smile up, and you're not genuinely into whatever it is that your friend is doing, you must support. You must support. And don't worry if you are great. Don't feel like your friend will fly and leave you. Because if you are great, you're just great too. And there's enough you know, space. Really My friend Karen always talk about how the universe have holy for space for all of us. Don't worry. I know oh, there's a there's a debate <laughs> online now going on about what sign you are. Everybody clicks. Leo. <laughs> See there? <I> Leo. <laughs> She's a Leo, I'm, everybody. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to look for the song normal. So, so it's actually yeah. Neo. It's actually Neo, and it's I'm a movement by myself. But right. I'm a force when we're together. Thank you. Powerful. Thank you. Thank you. It's powerful. It's powerful. So I can stand up here and I can talk and I can yap and I can whatever. But look at the three of you together. This is a classic example. It's a classic example of a force moving forward. Yes, you would have done great individually. Um, okay. But when you put three of you together and you harness all the individual strengths and then within the group, you work on each other's weakness. So that when you present as a group, you present as a force. You can't lose. Amen. You cannot lose. We receive that. We receive that. Yeah. I want to start with from Chicago. Yeah. We, everybody knows about your training. Everybody knows you are the best trainer, as Michelle um, worded it earlier today. But during the pandemic, your business took off. It did. And you realize that you weren't only styling yourself, you weren't only training cabin crew, you were doing all these other things that everybody else could tap into now, and you stepped into during a global pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, your entrepreneurial journey. So tell us how that has been, and how did you build your business during a pandemic? 
Well, you know, to be honest with you, um, I've never been very aggressive about it. I've always been doing it. I've been with, with, you know, we've been doing styling here and there and whatever and doing a lot of speaking engagements and so on. But um, during the pandemic, and I, I really have to big up um, Alicia and, and the team from Sagicor, um, I found that not just them, but all the other persons that I've worked with during the pandemic, people became a lot more image conscious during the pandemic because it was about your visual now. It was about how you were presenting and so on. And so a lot of persons started to reach out more um, for their birthday shoots, for um, events that they were, they were, you know, their online events or whatever, because I, I have a serious, serious problem with, presentation online a serious problem with presentation online i find that no i feel like it's a lot better but when we had just gotten digital um post um covid excitement in march persons didn't understand how to transition they felt like it was a rollout of bed thing compared to okay i'm going to an event so i must dress up now for this thing now i just need to roll out of my bed i'm have on my nighty i'm a thing i'm a whatever no and so I think I had posted a video on it and it, it got quite a bit of traction. Lots of people were interested in it. And so a lot of people started to reach out, you know, in terms of how they need to look, um, if I can organize this for them, so on and so on and so on. Um, but to be honest with you, when I'm being very truthful in this interview, I'm really shelling out my stories. I, I didn't, after a while, I wasn't too enjoying the styling because I don't believe that Jamaica understands what a stylist does. Jamaica is designer-centric, but not stylish-centric. You know, stylist, rather, centric. They right. understand that there's a designer, but they don't understand that there's a stylist who first visualize the picture and then go look yes. for the pieces. They don't get yeah. that. Yeah. So at the end of the... They, they don't get that part. They don't understand why they should pay for that. Right, right, right. But 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 I will I I was you know having this conversation with Karen and Michelle recently, and I was saying that there is nice, but I don't reside in nice. You know, you might you might show up to something, and somebody said, "Lord, she look nicey. She look nice. Well, yeah, yeah, you look nice. That's okay." But I don't I don't live there. I want yeah. oh my God. That's what I want. I want one. Well, you get it every single time you step out. You get it <laughs> every I single time you step out. <laughs> but I no, 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 so nice. we say, mm, Pete, nice. <laughs> Food is nice. Jerk chicken is nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, I want, I want, wow, who that? I want that. I want that head turning moment for, for, yes. for anybody who I'm styling. So, yes, you can go out and buy a nice dress and look nice, but I'm going head to toe. I'm going to go with the piece that must go in your hair. I'm going to go with what must happen there. I must go to the shoe. I must go to how you must stand up, how you must pose to the picture, how you must look. The whole thing. The whole thing. That's that's what I want. M Michelle said Norma is allergic to mediocre. Anything. <laughs> allergic. Ah, yes. allergic. That's, that's why and Russia Norma and Norma are, are, are twins. Yeah. Eh? Yes. Yes, that's why that's like Yes, yes, my girl, my girl. You know, I feel like I feel, really, guys. I feel like you see, we don't know how long we're having now, and this it's it's show this this pandemic is showing us a lot of things. We don't know how much of this existence we have. So this this we don't know how long we're gonna be in this realm for the time that we're here. Let's enjoy it, no man. Let us let us live it. Let us let us bite it and live it. And you know, like when you eat a good East Indian and the, the juice drip down. Let the, that's yeah. how you must live your life. <laughs> let, let the juice, yeah. let the juice run over your face, man. It's so life must live. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to we, our our first live event. Norma is going to have to style the Emerge trio, right? <laughs> Of course. And you, know, and you know, for me, it will be the worst. <laughs> I will be the hardest one. No, no, no. If Ta if Tammy was if Tammy if Tammy came around, you will come around too. You come around. Listen, Angie, Angie begs me constantly. She said, Cat, please let me just just give me one day. <laughs> So and no, guess what? And tell us. And he's my spirit spirit twin. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh yes. So tell us. 
tell us two highlights of your entrepreneurial journey. Well, oh God. Well, I have to start with with um Sajikor Gold. I have to start there. I mean, that was really amazing. Um, just how everybody received it. Um, I I really have to I have to say that that was that was an amazing, amazing, amazing journey. And the next one has to be, um, it's on my page, but um, the next one has to be the Sajikor exec um, for SMS. I styled the team and um, they had wanted to do a shoot, the executive. Ooh, that, that photo shoot that we did? In Montego Bay, yes. Mm -hmm. Right, so I um, we went through all the entire um, spots in Montego Bay because they wanted to celebrate Montego Bay as the location for SMS. And so, um, I mean, like I had people jumping up to catch planes. I had Alicia on the Monte line down on the Montego Bay side. <laughs> um, I had Shamari in, in the middle of the Sam Sharp Square statues doing the power fist. And it was, uh, the pictures were out of this world. Out of this world. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, the Static Core family is definitely online. Hey, Charvel. <laughs> oh, no. How can I not mention Charvel? Charvel is kind of like a Tammy to, you know, get like a trouble. She yes. says, she says, no, I don't like you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I love her. I love her. And I love to see, you know, her every now and again owning it. Um, that's another big one. Charvel on the beach for um, the Observer in the white. Um, yes. the shop was done by me. Yes, I styled her for that. That was a beautiful picture. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah, 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 man. People live some good life, man. Enjoy yourself, man. Take some good pictures. Drive through the island, and you know, and relieve your head, man. Don't, don't, just stop. Just, just stop dwelling in it. You know, don't, don't sit in it. Go through it. Yeah, for sure. So normal. So we are also kindred spirits in the personal branding space. And I'm mm -hmm. always so excited when there are other players in the industry because it just helps people to understand it a lot more. When you hear multiple voices flowing from different experiences and different approaches. So we yeah. know, we always just leave our emergence with some good tips. What are two personal branding tips that you could leave with our emergers now, especially as we spoke about this digital space we're living in and how we still show up with our brand online? Well, I, I take a very simplistic view of this whole thing to bring this this thing. And it's it's a little bit more than the two. I'll just give it that there are three pillars that I live by in personal branding. Three pillars. So one is gonna be your image. And how you communicate who you are, that is one. Two is going to be how you speak, how you articulate, how you communicate, what you have to say, the written word, the spoken word, how you know how you how you get about whatever it is that you're going to say. And the third one, the third one, which is the one that a lot of persons have a little bit of difficulty with, it's your innards, so to speak who you are outside of the clothes and the prettiness. So that part of your soul, one, your authenticity, two, your honesty, three, your integrity, four, who it is that you, do you, do you stand up and say, I'm going to do something and I do it? How great are you at what you do? Do you work on your craft? Do you, do you sharpen your skills in terms of your education and what it is that you do? That part of your innards, you know, because I find that you will find somebody who is beautiful to look at. They may be right well and so on, but the innards wrong. Who they are at the soul level is wrong. So I feel like as a tip, I always like to tell people to break it, break it down in those three and see which part of it that you may need some work. How are you in terms of who you are? The actual raw naked you, how are you? Can you ask yourself those questions that I asked? I mean, 
are you a nice person? Do people want to come to you? Do people want to have a conversation with you? Do you know what it is that you're about? Do you work on what you do? Then do you write well? Do you speak well? If you don't, then let's get some help for that. How do you look? Do you put yourself together? Do you represent yourself well? Are your social media pages looking good for the representation of your image? And if that's not the case, let's work on that. So just break it down, dissect it in those three. And trust me, it's very simple. Very, very simple. So for, for there are a lot of people that would say, just because they don't really understand that they don't have a personal brand, right? Or I am not a confident person. Norma, help me. What would you mm -hmm. say to that? You see, there are different versions of confidence. A lot of people think they're not a confident person, but what they really want to say is that I'm not a loud and bold person. I, my daughter is nothing like me, nothing at all like me, but she's very confident in her, her own quiet way. She's not a person who is going to enter the room and be loud or you're not going to see her in feathers or anything like that. But she's going to enter and she's going to understand that she can move around the space. So as long as you start to work on those aspects of self, you will feel the power that comes from the work that you're putting in. And that work that you're putting in, it's almost like you start to get some A's in your exam. When you start to see the benefits of the, of the work that you're putting in, then automatically you're going to start to feel more confident as the days go by, as you have other experiences with people, as, as people notice the improvements, the confidence will come. It will come. It's a process if you have no confidence at all or if you have confidence that needs to be discovered by you. You know, I told Rochelle when she was pregnant, that God knew better than to give her a daughter because the daughter would grow up with a complex, right? With a fabulous mother like Rochelle. And so you have a daughter. And like Naomi said, we equate you to our Rochelle. And, and I, so I'm happy that you brought it up, that you know your daughter is confident, but she's not like you. How did no. you help her to develop her sense? How did you help her to develop her sense of self? Well, you know, I was really worried about, about the whole process. And I'm being very honest. I was being, I was extremely worried about it mm -hmm. from day one, but I think where she would have gotten her confidence from a lot of her confidence from would be the fact that I put, I put almost everything away to be wherever she needed to be. So I was at every dance recital. I was at every, whatever. I was the loudest cheerleader. She's like, if somebody's making noise, she's like, oh, yes, that's my mom. She knew that she could always fall back on me. She knew that. And she, you know, I reassured her. She knew in her, she knew I told her that she was beautiful. I gave her all the reassuring words. And I also armed her with the tools that she needed in life in terms of her education, in terms of her social skills. She has her little battles every now and again. But I can tell you that it's deep inside there. It's a, it's a very strong to the point where every now and again we have some arguments because I want to tell her where to go and she ain't going there. <laughs> because I want to be dominant and say, no, you're not doing that and whatever. And she's like, mommy, I'm a big woman. No. <laughs> but in her own quiet way, she will do it because of the fact that I have reassured her that a lot of the things that she's done are good and right. Wow. So the praise is very important. Norma, this has been really, really amazing. You know, we, we've, we've actually wanted to have you on the platform for a while. Um, but you know, everything in its time. And it is perfect. I think this was the perfect time. And I think our audience, you know, really got to see just a different side behind the brand. Right? Um, and, to, and, and it encourages us to celebrate life and to you know have the experience you know, still have to live right we still have to move through each experience take what we can from it share help to motivate inspire but we still want to look cute right and go through <laughs> i definitely think that norma needs to give us our best advice no well i mean i was actually going to go there because it's not on our script and yeah. I'm like, we have to do our best advice segment with norma so you can yeah. 
You know what my best advice would be for everybody? It's a journey that I'm now on. And it is about the, the self-discovery. Because as much as I thought I knew about my own self, I'm discovering so much more about myself now as I'm going through. And what I do a lot of the time as I get up some free time, I hit the road and anywhere the car goes, that's where I go. And I'm gone to some part of the island all by myself. Oh, I love that. With my tripod and my my phone and I do my videos and I enjoy myself and I, I enjoy the country. And it's such an exhilarating experience. I feel like it's a part of my own it, I don't know if I can call it meditation because it's not quiet and silent, but mm -hmm. it is my own quiet self-discovery time. Yes. So I, I wish that instead of persons being so locked up and so on and so on, if you drive with you and your significant other, you and your family, you alone, if you have nobody to drive with, jump in your car, make sure you have gas and the car is okay, put a little money for some roast corn and stuff, and head out. Yes. Don't stay cooked up in the house, feeling down, because we have to stay on the road. We can't have no flat tire on life's journey. We gotta drive, guys. We got oh, to I drive. Love that. Yeah. We know <laughs> that. But, but Nama, you you are so big on relationships and your friendships clearly you've had for a very long time. Our comments are blowing up with everybody that is talking about how oh, you're the best, you're the most amazing friend. So we oh, need God. your best advice about relationships. You know, you know, the best advice about relationships, I think I should give it to myself as well, because that's where I'm learning a lot about myself as well. And it is and it's it's advice that I'm trying to learn to give to take for my own self. It has to do with stay loyal and forgive and meet each person at their own points. You can't go down where they're not, where you can't force them, you can't push them. Just meet them where they are. Don't have too many expectations and, and just stay loyal. Stay loyal. Love meeting them where they are. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, what's, yep, your, yep. what's your best advice about love? Ooh. That the part of me never touch, you know, in case you never notice. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to touch it now. <laughs> well, all right, let me tell you something about love. I have lost some really good partners again because, again, you see the warrior blood. The warrior blood is a good thing because it has helped me to fight. I'm, I'm actually really of maroon descent, right? So that warrior blood has really helped me to go through a lot of life's battles. But the warrior blood may not take foolishness. And so it has caused me to lose a lot of really good relationships. Um, and, and, and so as a result of it, sometimes you will be resented because, you know, you know, sometimes if 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 there if let's say you work let me use that this analogy you work in a company and one of the employees is stealing from the boss and you catch the thief you think the thief going like you so if i am the best private eye in the whole world so don't try on me because i'm a find out <laughs> and so you see that you see that aggressive warrior spirit when i find out make us say uh -huh, there you go Look at that. Bam, bam, bam. And if I hadn't been so aggressive and so that way, I know that, a, a, you know, relationships would have lasted longer. So my advice to my daughter and young ladies her age, I would say, evaluate what your relationship, evaluate the importance, look for core values in the person and use that and measure it up against mistakes because what i did wow. a lot of the time i just wanted to catch a thief yes. instead of looking for values because wow. we all make mistakes right right yes. right so that would be my biggest biggest advice 
in terms of relationships. I love trying to catch up. I love <laughs> 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 Say, show me a fight language. <laughs> <laughs> a fight. <laughs> and Norma, what is your best advice about money? Money. Mm. Now, my best advice about money, to be honest with you, and this is the truth, where God love. When I was really young, um, I met my daughter's father and we got married. Um, I never really had to worry about money too much because money was not a problem. Um, I never had to worry about it. And so I feel like at, in my youth, I did not develop the, um, I should say, the respect for money that I needed to have. The money was not a problem. I had, I had this car, that house, whatever. It wasn't a problem. So come, when, when we separated now and I, I'm like, oh, oh, oh. So, so we have to pay bills? <laughs> What's that? So I had to now relearn about money. And what I wish that I had then was, and I, and I really hope and pray that parents, especially of teenagers, are doing this now, teaching your young ones about money and how to respect money. Um, and, you know, it doesn't matter if they have or not or if you can afford to or not, let them understand the value of what it is that they have and and what it is that whatever putting aside, whatever amount of money, what that can do in the future. I was just having a conversation with somebody who was, um, I'm sure she's on and she'll hear that her, she wanted to not live on campus, but live at another location. And it was $89,000 a month. And you know, the, her dad was saying, no, that's too expensive. And she couldn't understand why. And I was saying, well, maybe you should just multiply it by 12 and show her what it really looks like for a whole year. And so have these financial conversations um, with them. I'm actually a part of a shoot now for Sajikor. And there's a youngster that I met today. And I was just blown out of the water. How serious this little boy was about money and putting aside money and, and, and so on. And he told me that he learned this as a, as in a club at Arden, that they had this financial club at Arden teaching the children about money. And that is brilliant. Is that cat? <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Oh, I said, Brian. Sign out, Cap. Sign out and sign back in. <laughs> but you know that 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 was bound to happen you know, because you know when good things are happening, the devil likes to try to jump in and like all oh, the voice and those things. Not today, not today, not today. Not today. Not today. <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> Not today. Not today. Um, and and if 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 any persons on aren't sure about their money condition, call Brandon Ferguson, aka Thank Booby. You. Booby. Booby will organize you. <laughs> Booby will organize you. Yep. We definitely need to start those conversations with our children. We really don't. We might say, oh, you save your money, you save your lunch money. Have deeper conversations, have deeper conversations to let them understand exactly what money can do. You know, um, I wish I had those conversations. Somebody had those conversations with me back then. You know, yeah. um, I think I would have been a lot, you know, more comfortable now. Yeah. Um, we have a question from Vanessa. Vanessa says, good night. What's your advice for young people who have big dreams for their personal brand? Listen, man, let me tell you something. Last Christmas, you know, wait, no, no. Let me start in September. This is, this is September 2019 before pandemic, right? I had a brunch. What I did, I did a job and whatever the money I got, I used that money to host a brunch 
for any of my team members who wanted to come. Anybody who wanted to come, I hosted a brunch. I had a few of my friends and a few persons to come as speakers for us to look into whatever it is that you do. Coincidentally, Anjali came as a speaker, Michelle, Karen, um, Novia McDonald White came, thank God, uh, Debbie from at the time, Debbie was um, her, well, still, she has her bars company where, where she teaches stuff. And they came in and they spoke to the persons that I had this brunch for. And out of it, so many persons found their calling to live their, their other lives and were able to start companies. Listen, man, don't stop. If you have a child who has a talent, who if you have a sister, a youngster, a friend, anybody who has a talent, you tell them don't stop. Push them right through. I don't stop with them. And you would never believe it that these people... Their flight attendants, they work for us. And what I, if you look at my page, you will see me driving to their different little things that they start up, their little startup businesses, trying to promote in any way that I can, trying to bring any kind of eyes to it and pushing them, having conversations with them. My, my assessment, my performance assessment always has a moment where I ask them, what would you really, really like to do as a hobby outside of all of this? Because understand something with children with big dreams a lot of the times when children have big dreams we shut them down until the child fights through and makes something of it some of the children aren't fighters so what happens to those dreams they become frustrated adults when they're 60 or 70 boy when i was 20 and i could have run like you see in both no but you didn't. Mm -hmm. you didn't because somebody told you to go sit down in a corner and you sat down in the corner you know what I mean? We, we need to stop that. We really need to stop that with our children. Push them. Push them. If as long as you see that they, they really want to do something, encourage them. Find, you know, do whatever research. Sit with them. Do the research. Support them. We we'll have to do that. And not just with your own children. Yeah. Somebody else. You know, this mentorship but thing is important, you know. And that is one of the things that I'd really love for us to talk about as well. We need to start mentoring. That's a, you know, let me tell you, uh, Karen will tell you every other day I will call her. My concern is what is happening to those children who, when they were forced to go to school, they didn't like it, right? When they're forced to sit in a classroom, they didn't like it. Do you think they're going to sign in on no Zoom school? What's going to happen to them? The crime and all the other social ills are going to go through the roof. We have to, as, as, as persons, we have to start mentoring. We have to start reaching out because guess what? Crime is all of our problem. We might feel we yes. live in a gated community, and other, but we have to come out at some point. So, you know, I feel like push those children, push them, let them see a bigger, let them see a bigger picture. And also don't encourage mediocrity in your children. Do not encourage it because I believe that we're all, we all have genius inside of us. It's just to find what it is. And when you mm -hmm. find it, let them push that to excellence. Absolute excellence in everything that they do. Absolute excellence. Do not allow them. Don't clap when the thing don't do good. No. Push. Push all the way through. All mm -hmm. the way. Dig. It, you know, why is you saying both fastest man in the world? Because when he, he could easily run this way, but when he's there, he in, in draw fifth gear. Mm -hmm. How many of us draw fifth gear in what we do? Everybody does coasting on third. Every now and again, I like a fourth. <laughs> we have to find our fifth gear. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Normal. <laughs> <laughs> the word. The word. The word. <laughs> Yeah, we have to find fifth gear. We we'll have to find fifth gear. You know, I'll, I'll give a joke. Once um, um, Karen's son's party, they were, they were taking me on. Why for a first birthday party, we need to have whatever. Why we can't use paper plates? Somebody was saying it, you know. No. No. It's his first birthday party. It's a celebration. It's a proper celebration. Let us celebrate. Let us, let us, you call me here to come to your thing. I can't just go, 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 come home and rush and come sit down and take. I have to dress up for you. 
that's the respect that I have to show to you for inviting me to your esteemed virtual stage. We can't just come, just so. You, I invite you to come to celebrate the birth of this child. This this boy's first celebration of his birth. It's not a regular old thing. <laughs> We're not going to have this again. <laughs> it's not regular. <laughs> we need a celebration. We need ceremony. That's one of the reasons why when people have their their parties and they put a dress code on it. It's who you for coming to the people thing and they'll follow the dress code after the people plan mm -hmm. out them mm -hmm. and make sure that they thought that draping is the same color of what they wanted to wear. Oy, oy. <laughs> and, and, the pretty, and the pretty dessert is the same color of what you want to wear. And when the people look back at them picture, you have on a wrong thing and spoil up the whole thing. No. So Show some Brian, Brian says, emerge, I'm sending you an invoice for normal interview. Naomi, check your email. I want to know why he sent me the email though. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Brother knows. Brother knows because when we have our little friend birthday thing, you know, it's color coded. Mm. Yeah. And it and thing because because it's a celebration of life, guys. Celebrate your lives, and it doesn't have to be an expensive thing, you know. I know when people say, Oh, I don't have no money for that, it does not have to be an expensive thing. I remember back in the day we used to go to Screechy for my birthday. And, and Carol we will plate and we, we wine glasses and we tablecloth and spread tablecloth and eat fish and have four course meal out at Screechy. And Michelle Williams, who uh, movable feast, used to come and cater up the dessert and cater up the thing and whatever. And we have all of this spread out at Screechy. Yay! Yeah. We celebrate life. If tomorrow morning I go, I can tell you I've lived. Yeah. I've lived. Live. I, never, I never just come here for walk through. We never just screech it through life. I walked walk through this place. I sauntered through. I pirouetted through. I danced through. <laughs> yeah. You do like. <laughs> did it. Well, you are extraordinary. <laughs> no, we're, we're people friendly, like the people them who, the two people them who know you. And then it's like, this lady, I need to follow her. I need her to help me stream my Where people find you? Well, people can find me on Instagram as Nor Willie. Um, Michelle actually invented that name some time ago. And on Facebook, I'm Norma Williams. I'm also on LinkedIn as well as Norma Williams. And on Twitter as Norma Williams as well. So people can follow me if they wish. You know, I like to talk on it. Sometimes I'll, you know, just give my vibes on life, my views on life, talk about stuff. And I love to, and I'm not going to show nobody no bad face because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm, there's so many sides to me. I'm the same person who you may just catch downtown at Moby Dick eating a curry goat. You might see me at the, 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 the street side, you know, but when I do, I'm, I'm going to enjoy this life. I'm going to enjoy this life. And I invite everybody out there, if you're watching, if you're going to tell a friend, phone a friend, enjoy your life is your life you it, i'm not living rochelle's life i'm not living naomi's life i'm not living catherine's life i'm living norma's life is my own i'm living my Amen. own, <laughs> my Amen. own. That is that is a perfect way to wrap up our segment norma we are so grateful that you took the time to dress up for us and spend time with us on our platform. As you see, even just in the comments, the comments have been going nonstop from as early as 7.35 p.m., even though we start at 8. <laughs> we that people are really anticipating this conversation and having you share with us on our platform. So we are truly, truly grateful. I'm sure many people are leaving here tonight feeling super inspired um, with your with your words of wisdom. They've left with personal branding tips, 
they've left with just learning that even though life happens and life comes at you fast and we have these experiences, it's how we walk through these experiences that matter. So we just want to thank you again so, so much. I'm sure I was going to say, if you're not following Norma, please make sure you're following her on Instagram. But I'm almost like 100% sure that everybody that's on is already following you, especially after we posted the, the um, Instagram handle for those that weren't before. So we just want to thank you again, Norma, so much. An amazing episode. And we just want to thank you again for being a part of our emergency process. Like, we want to big up the staff of our family because they're our family too. And they're also our official sponsor of Emerge. So we are also grateful to have the Sagicor family on board watching this particular episode. Ubi, we love you. And we'll talk to the invoice. <laughs> yeah, and Norma, we just, um, you have been such an inspiration and I know you in your spirit conversation with us today. So we pray a special blessing over you that the continue to surround you everywhere that you go. And the Lord has continued opening up doors of opportunity for you to share, for you to show excellence, for you to be somebody that people can look at and see. And she serves a big God. I want to serve him too. The Lord is praying abundance, happiness, joy, long life, strength, health, wealth, everything for you. Thank you, Norm. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for having me. I really appreciate it. this. Was on. This was really great. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you. So guys, we want to thank you again so much for joining another episode of Detour Essentials Live. We're here every Wednesday at 8 p.m. with a new guest sharing something new that we hope will inspire and motivate you. Again, we're so grateful to have Norma on the show tonight. We're grateful to our Sagicor family, to our new Emerge family that joined us for the first time tonight. If you like this episode, please share, please subscribe to our channel, invite someone to re-watch this episode. And also check out, we've had four seasons, guys. We're in season four, episode four. So go back in our YouTube and check out some of the other amazing guests that we've had um, to leave you feeling inspired. So look out for some new information coming up from us. As Catherine had mentioned at the beginning of the show, we are going to be having our second um, Emerge webinar of the year. And it's all about emerging online. So look out for the information. Follow us on Instagram at Ready to Emerge. And you can follow us on Facebook and, of course, YouTube, Ready to Emerge as well. So thanks, everyone. See you again next week, Wednesday at 8 p.m.